Hello! Before the video starts, I would like to inform you that the following video has fusion-like sounding audio. I don't know what caused this issue, but seeing as this is both A, a Dragon Ball video, B, a reaction, and C, a discussion, I sort of let it slide because nothing is cooler than accidentally sounding like you fused with someone. Also, that means I must have accidentally fused with someone and the combined parts look like me. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, that guy from Team Nudo, bringing you the Dragon Balls... Top 24 Villains Part 2 from D. December from the talented folks at Team Four Star. Today they also dropped uh, the uh, Top Villains of Super and I'm going to do that probably next video if it isn't Star Wars Rogue One review. I know I'm going to put that up. I'm going to put a Team Four Star video up for Rogue One. I haven't seen Rogue One yet but I'm going to see it tomorrow. But anyhow, I figured I'd do this since the last one did pretty decent on my channel. So, you know, for my numbers. Not as good as a normal Team 4 Star episode reaction, but then again, these don't get the same traction as their normal episodes either, so... A lot of diminishing returns there. Anyhow, I sort of like doing it because I like to... Sort of see their reasoning for it, and then sort of put where I would put it, and then have a little discussion down below. I mean, feel free to do that. You know, like the video if you agree with my opinion, just like it if you disagree, and you know, let me know why down below. Because apparently YouTube cares about all of that shit now. But anyhow, let's get on and see what the wonderful people at Team Force have to say. DB7. Top 24 villains in Dragon Ball. 18. Okay, yeah. Evil scientist brain 18 through like 13 or something company. like that. Okay, point's been made. Moving on. Yep. Androids 19 and 20, the latter commonly being known as Dr. Jiro, are intriguing villains. Design-wise, concept-wise, they agree. really take the science fiction angle the series adopted in the last As I said arc last time, this is, uh... The Red Ribbon Army had already introduced the concept of androids way back in the early days of the franchise. But here we see the concept fully fleshed out as the driving force of the story. Also, Dr. Jiro, said the, uh, the mastermind behind Dr. the original Wheel Red thing Android was sort of a really cool concept. And as a revenge this, tale, it definitely should work on But not as fully but realized as it the Red Ribbon Arc. A couple of reasons. Well, that was more Good refined than the Red Ribbon Arc, and it was more refined Bentley, from there. We'll get to that. Their first appearance in this series is one of the most violent, disturbing chain of events to take place in the series. Exactly. And immediately establishes these two as both a threat to our heroes and to humanity. They make no qualms murdering innocent people around them. As well as of putting course. a hand straight through Yamcha's chest in a sequence that, frankly, is unsettling on every level. It's such a brilliant <laughs> beginning to these two characters that, unfortunately, just fizzles out by the end. Yeah, and there's a reason for uh, that. Yeah. Oddly enough, it comes down to their designs. You see, a Chinese doll and an old man dressed for a trip on the Titanic aren't exactly the first <laughs> visuals that come to mind when you think about major <laughs> Dragon Ball villains. Which is exactly what Toriyama's previous <sighs> editor, Kazuhiko Torishima, thought. In an interview in Shenlong That's Times number two, Toriyama hysterical. quotes Torishima, I thought that the enemies had finally come. But aren't these just a geezer and a fatso? Toriyama <laughs> had not planned for another set of villains. So he ended up scrapping them for Androids 17 and 18. This does there little to go. affect their ranking, of course, but it does explain why they start so strong and then are so quickly set aside for their younger counterparts. But ultimately, Fair there's enough. a lot of enjoyment to be pulled from these creepy mechanics. And then this. Including giving Vegeta one of the most badass Super Saiyan transformations in the series and the introduction of the mm -hmm. Big Bang attack. Thanks, Android 19. You proved robots can feel fear. 17. <laughs> Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Uh. <laughs> well, there's has got a terrifying design, and his stick of being the legendary <laughs> Super Saiyan works well in concept, but is poorly executed from start to finish. His motivation ranges from weak to laughable, and two thirds of his films are utter garbage. He only made this list because of his impact <laughs> on the audience of the franchise, and we all wish he'd been stabbed a couple more times as a baby as to save us from the suffering of having to sit through his film a collective five times to give you the abridged version. Speaking of which, we hope you enjoy it. We love working on it, and we love you all so much. Next. <laughs> 16. <laughs> You'll have to excuse us, as it's only going to be myself and Kaiser this time. Yeah, for some reason, Tuck has been tied up and gagged in the storage room. I hope he's alright. Nappa isn't exactly the first character that people think of when they hear best Dragon Ball villains. At least not until we became a thing anyway. But back padding aside, he's actually a very effective enemy <laughs> yeah, in the um... Saiyan Saga. 
The death but of major Napa's characters up until this point was something that the franchise had already become familiar with. The utter onslaught Nappa lays down yeah. is nothing short of monstrous, and it all climaxes with the death of the only character who absolutely could not die, effectively taking away their get out of death free card and setting up for the entire next arc. His design is intimidating, exactly. his actions are ferocious, but his personality is a pretty run of the mill mutant death as. machine. Sure, he's got some great expressions, but his standalone personality leaves him better suited to being a lackey than serving as a primary <laughs> threat. That being said, he fills that job better than almost any other character in the franchise. Not to mention, he's also a part of one of the biggest memes to ever guess that. Hey, 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 what? Hey, kids, do you like violence? Taka, Taka, get back in the room! <laughs> there is no Taka now. There is only Nappa. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> okay. You know who was a fun villain? Pilaf. What if you took him, but then made him okay. effective? You'd have King Piccolo. Or Frieza. Okay, but what about Garlic Jr.? What about Garlic yeah. Jr.? The guy's the only villain in the franchise to actually get his wish for immortality. He is no, a better uh, Emperor was released, But we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> Unlike King Piccolo, who wished for his youth back like an idiot, he goes straight for immortality. What's more, he has a background that's firmly rooted in the lore of the franchise. Being the disgraced son of a banished would-be Kami out for revenge yep. is a really neat concept. While not a, a lot is done with it, it's definitely a backstory that helps pull together a great group of characters to fight, including Kami. He's also such a mm -hmm. great-looking character. A vicious little gremlin clad in robes. He really does look like Emperor Pilaf's evil twin brother. And it kind of works. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what they're going for. Designs. Though they mostly serve to give Goku and Piccolo some fantastic fight scenes, his transformed state, on the other hand, while not bad, doesn't really have much going for it. Wait, does Not really. that mean transformation started with Garlic Jr.? Huh, maybe Toriyama did borrow more from the anime than we thought. Either way, he's a pretty <laughs> effective villain whose film left a heavy... I mean, there's also a... He, uh... He also I'm had sure a Goku transformed into an Ozaru before that, that, but... We're not gonna talk about that. It wasn't a command, so I suppose... But Dead Zone is a delight for fans Garlic of Jr. both the original first. Dragon Ball and its follow-up Z. And Garlic Jr.'s design, along with this concept, certainly add to that. Now, if only he hadn't gone full hubris and opened the dead zone, effectively the only thing that could beat him. Never go full hubris. <laughs> 14. Never go full hubris. Imagine being a kid who grew up watching Dragon Ball, <laughs> like the original Dragon Ball, and <laughs> Son Goku grow from a young boy into a man, and now That's he's got a life, a kid, a family. You'd think this is where the series would end, right? Instead... Toriyama decides he's going to shake up the very foundation of the series a whole four years into the manga's serialization by introducing oh, yeah. the main character's long-lost brother, Raditz. Let's be frank, Raditz is not yeah, a great he villain. A... He's there for a total of five episodes of the anime and a total of ten manga not chapters. Not a great villain, but his After impact his was gigantic. He's super gun and only ever referenced in the Saiyan Saga as a measuring stick for Vegeta and Nappa. His personality also doesn't have much that sets him apart. Though his savagery as an interplanetary destroyer of races definitely sets him apart from the villains before him. He's also got a ridiculously mm -hmm. memorable design with his long hair and intimidating figure. How long do you think it takes him to dry that hair, by the way? I'm guessing... Three hours? Super Two Saiyan hour day. You're assuming Saiyan's bathe. Oh man, imagine being stuck in one of those pods for an entire year. I reek of sweat after a good night's sleep. Either way, he looks awesome, and his <laughs> battle with Goku and Piccolo is also particularly memorable. They pull out all uh -huh. the stops to beat him, and it takes the sacrifice of Goku, oh, God, the oh, main oh, character, to finally take the pineapple head down. It's an amazing scene, too. The Makan Kosapo is certainly not wasted on Raditz. Unfortunately, what is wasted is opportunity. Uh -huh. They introduce the main character's brother as an antagonistic force, but he's eliminated almost as soon as he's introduced. Ten chapters exactly. out of the 519 is pretty sad, but that doesn't change what his appearance meant for the franchise and the impact he had on the fan base, regardless. Oh, brother, where art exactly. thou? Exactly. All right, he's in hell. Let's never talk about this again. Thirteen. Excuse me. Kaiser, don't freak out. Huh? Yeah. No, Kaiser, just calm down. I don't. I, I'm okay, guys. I'm cool. Kaiser, please. Stop yelling at us, guys. It's fine. Baby's kind of cool. 
Excuse you? Look, I hate GT as much as the next guy. As long as the next guy has a hatred that spans multiverses. But like you said, it happened. Trying to ignore what it meant to the franchise would be doing a disservice to it as a whole. And baby I'm not just going to dismiss it whole And I'm going to recognize opinion. that Baby was a really neat concept. His backstory is rather yeah. convoluted. But to sum it up, Baby is the creation of the Tuffles, a race invented mm -hmm. for the anime as a warring collective against the Saiyans. While the Saiyans were depicted as brutish, bloodthirsty warriors, the Tuffles demonstrated advanced technology that overpowered the might of the Saiyans. They were captured on planet Tuffle, a reformed planet plant, which then became planet Vegeta after the full moon rose, and it just gets really confusing. You can boil <laughs> Baby's motivation down to, you guys took my planet, I want it back. So this planet hopping parasite yep. takes a few bodies, claims Vegeta's, and by the time Goku and Co return, the entire planet is possessed by this conniving little devil. When it comes to feats of villainy, it's hard to top actually taking over the planet. I know I'm not alone in my problems baby, with baby, Vegeta. Though. Also he does awesome. possess Vegeta, effectively removing him from the entire arc, which is a huge disservice to the character. Same thing happens to Ooh. While the inception of I mean, is touching, but he amounts to nothing. His nice backstory is incredibly confusing. Sick. And his design is pretty bad. But his single motivation does provide a new stage for noteworthy Saiyan imagery. Planet Vegeta comes back in control of a mm -hmm. Vegeta. The Earth serves as a surrogate for the Moon in Goku Super Saiyan 4 transformation. And Baby revives the Great Ape form with a golden tinge this time. It's a fun highlight of what defines the Saiyans mm -hmm. as we saw them in the past. He definitely has problems, but as far as villains go, he actually executed some pretty nasty stuff. His arc exactly. is maybe the best that GT ever had, and while still mediocre to bad at parts, Baby's origins and motivations propelled the oh, transformation yeah, dude, to Super, Super Saiyan Super Saiyan motherfucking four. Body hair. Like, where, where did his pants come from? Wasn't he a kid? His arc has a lot of great moments that unfortunately just don't salvage it. As a character, he's petulant and sniveling rather than insidious. But as a villain, Baby certainly is memorable. <laughs> maybe Final oh, Bad yeah. had something to do with that. Oh look, something worse than GT itself. <laughs> Wow, Jesus, these fly by so fast to me. Anyhow, um, yeah, I don't disagree with some of the placements on our list, knowing that, you know, there's more villains to come. I gotta be chillin'. Sorry for yawning, I haven't had much sleep because fucking remodeling happening in the garage and kept being woken up by jackhammers, but I figured I should make this video, so. As I said, I'm going to pop through this and give comments that I may have already given, but I'd like to give more detail. So, yeah, Androids 19 and 20. Uh, they're correcting that Androids were introduced in the Red Ribbon arc of, you know, Dragon Ball. And then the concept wasn't really fully realized until the Android saga, where they commit some of the most villainous acts that ever happened on Earth and really established, do not fuck with these guys, because you're like, we just had Frieza, you know, tyrannical universal overlord, what could be the next step? And he has this guy from the future going, yo, two androids from the future, fucking wipe everyone out, and you're like, what do these look like? Fucking 19 and 20. Now, their designs are, as I said, like, a China doll and an old man, they're not very intimidating, and you know, a group set of teenagers actually is a bit more unsettling doing all these acts than an old man, and some about like teenagers or young adults committing acts like that with almost no remorse is a bit more unsettling than like an older dude where you go like, okay, he's seen some shit, he's over it, you know, you're more apt to believe he him doing that than the other stuff, which is why I believe, you know, 17, 18, even 16 are better villains, also their impact was a bit more of the series. But no way to deny that when the android showed up, they meant fucking business. <clears throat> and then they breezed past Broly, who, as I said, only really made the list because the fan community loves him. Hell, I love Broly. Fucking fire up. Broly t-shirt if I can get it on camera. Yeah. I'm wearing a Broly shirt. I clearly love Broly. As a kid, that was one of the coolest concepts I've ever seen. And when you're a kid, you're like, that looks cool. It must be the best thing ever. That's why everyone loves Super Saiyan 4 so much. It was marketable. We saw it and we were like, 
That's fucking awesome. We're just gonna do it over and over and over again. And then we get on over to, you know, future arcs and whatnot, and then you get older and look back on it and you go, these movies kind of suck. But, you know, I really can't wait till Christmas and when they put this out, and I'm loving all the Christmas parody songs they've been putting out. There's the old ones from back in the day, like Gone to the Scarface Bandit and all that stuff. But, uh, that was some good shit. Uh, the Popo Fujini. Yeah, Popo Fujini doing, uh, Out Here Five Seas Snowman. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Then, uh, yeah, Nappa. He shows up with Vegeta, and again, is that thing of a measuring stick of after. Toriyama had shaken up his universe like, what's the next step? This guy literally caused Piccolo to kill Goku to win. What is the next step? And Nappa served as a good stepping point. He's doing a far more effective job at eliminating a lot of key characters at the time had you watched Dragon Ball. And he's just going, holy shit. Almost wanting you to beg for Goku to come back as much as the next guy, and then when we get to Vegeta, probably higher up on the list until, you know, he does that whole, I'm gonna turn good now. Yep. I'm good now. And I just sort of melded Vegeta and Nappa in my voice, cause I can. But you can't deny that Nappa was intimidating, and his impact was felt, especially when he, you know, Build their get out of jail free card. Now for Garlic Jr. Um, if Pilaf isn't on the list, I don't know, because Garlic Jr. as I said is a well-executed version of Pilaf, but at the same time, he's a very short-lived anime villain, very short-lived movie villain. And though design is very reminiscent of Pilaf and he sets out to do everything and he did introduce transformations, at the end of the day, he's sort of written off, but at least his motivations and whatnot are far better than a lot of these other characters, including Broly, I can admit that. And the movie was actually pretty good, even though they do have that scene with Gohan peeing on Krillin, but hey, that's just probably Toriyama humor speaking. So, yeah, uh, Garlic Jr. is the only one I sort of question a little bit, but hey. And then, of course, as I said then, as I said with uh, Nappa, with the whole shaking up thing, Raditz really did shake things up. I had watched both. Dragon Ball and Z at the time, and I sort of skipped the Saiyan side when I first got in there, but, you know, when I went back, I was like, okay. Like, especially after I had watched Dragon Ball again all the way through, and then seeing, you know, the first few episodes of Z, you go, this really shook things up. Like, Raditz showing up when, hey, you know, this whole story sort of been confined to, you know, Maybe a few mythical or mystical beings living on Earth, but it's still very much on Earth, and all of a sudden, hey, there's a whole universe of el out there waiting to do shit, and you go, wow, that just happened. So, although his execution and whatnot wasn't very good other than the fact that it forced you to kill the main character which is also a pretty ballsy thing to do at uh you know the very beginning of the series like you had not seen dragon ball and you're just like okay this looks like this goku guy is the main character and after five episodes they just kill him you go what the fuck so yeah prop for the first guy to actually kill goku well me and piccolo is the first guy to do it but you know what i mean like it took that drastic of a measure uh, there's that. And then, uh, of course, there's Baby. As I said, great design. Backstory's a little convoluted, but as far as villains go, he's like the only one I'm aware of that actually took over the entire planet while everyone that could stop him was off-planet. Or the ones that could stop him 
he got them infected almost immediately so he could take over stronger hosts. And though he sort of, you know, took away from the impact of Oob and Vegeta in GT, the fact that he took them over and used them to such fanfare and success to the point where it took Goku attaining a new form of Super Saiyan to stop is fucking impressive. And that's all I will say on Baby, and I'm pretty sure Baby is the list. Okay, so that is my two cents on their placements on this list. Uh, the only one I sort of question is Garlic Jr. Pilaf's not on the list, but Pilaf's a little higher on the list, seeing as he's one of Goku's first antagonists. I see that impact on the series getting him a spot higher on the list, seeing as basically is a villain all throughout Dragon Ball that again his role keeps getting smaller and smaller the more powerful people get introduced but he did serve as a nice first antagonist and that probably wins a lot of points with you know uh, Kaiser, Kira, and Lenny, Taka, all of them anyhow if you like this video my discussion or you know like my opinion on this you know Drop a like if you agree with me. Drop a dislike if you don't. Tell me why I'm wrong or right in the comments. You know, get a discussion going. And I'll see you next time when they talk super villains. If you haven't seen Super, maybe don't watch that one. But if you don't mind spoilers or you're like me and you know enough of Super to go like, Alright, I know who Hit is. I know who Zamasu is. I know who Goku Black is. And all that stuff. I know who Beerus is. I know who Frost is, I know who Champa is. Then maybe give that a look. Hey, yeah, we're gonna break it on three. Yeah, and see you next time. Oh, this is the video going on for a while. One, two, three.